What are we painting today? Today we are painting Padres icon, Tony Gwynn. This is a hobby away from baseball that you do, how, how often? So I've always painted, I've painted my whole life. My dad was a big inspiration to me. He would sit and, and paint and draw, you know, as I was young and I would sit right by, next to his recliner. But as I went through classes and, you know, throughout grade school and high school and college, I realized everybody is kind of like painting the same thing. And I really found a way to make it myself and make it kind of unique by doing this uh, stencil spray. So I guess let's get started. I'm going to take off my shoes so we can get down okay. dirty and, and do this. What do you do with these? We ran a foundation, a season day foundation um, in our local area. I painted a couple portraits of me playing baseball and me playing football. I did it in this technique and it, it raised a lot of money and it, and it drew a lot of interest. So the Cubs had reached out to me, my previous team, and they wanted me to paint uh, something that kind of resembled the World Series. So for me, when I think of the World Series, I think of my two best friends on the team, which was Rizzo and, and KB, Chris Bryant. So I painted a picture of them of like the last out and then jumping up and down. We went to the charity and it ended up raising $35,000. You know, after that and seeing, you know, all the interest from that, I, I knew I could kind of continue to do this and continue to help and raise money through, uh, throughout, awesome. you know, charities and foundations. All right, well, let's get started. All right, so first we're gonna shake it up. Start spraying. So you don't want to hold it on one spot because it'll start to drip. So that's why I go back and forth. Why doesn't it work as well when I do it? I need validation. No, it's good. Artwork here. So we're gonna let it dry for now. So we were talking about charities. I read that you did something pretty charitable. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I do. Freshman year in college, I went to Villanova to play football and baseball. We do something called uh, the bone marrow drive. And as freshmen, we were the ones that go out and get as many people as possible to test to be a possible bone marrow match. So after we went around and um, got as many people as possible on campus to test, uh, we tested ourselves. My junior year, I was called upon to, to donate. And so there was like five or six people that were possible matches. After I did the blood tests, about a week later, I was called and they said, hey, you're a perfect match for this little girl. Um, she's 18 months old. Uh, would you be willing to give up your bone marrow for her? I donated, and uh, a year later I found out um, she was a little girl from Ukraine, and she was alive and healthy. I keep contact with her. Uh, I lost contact for four years. In the Ukraine, they were going through a war, and at the, where the war was, was where their house was. Because of that, I guess they lost like internet connection, or they were kind of moving from place to place. I, I wasn't able to get in contact with them, and, and then last year, ESPN got in contact with me again and said, hey, we found a little girl, would you be willing to see her? And I said, wow, that'd be great because I've been trying to contact them for the last four years. And I, so f four years went by and you just thought you'd never, you know, yeah, like, I yeah, don't know what I knew. You didn't know so, if she was okay? Yeah, so after a year later, I found out she was healthy. We had a, a kind of a Skype interview with her. So last year was, was the first time I saw her in four years and, and it was like the best feeling ever. You that know, just, so just seeing her and, and knowing that she was alive and healthy. And I've kept in contact with them since. Uh, they have another baby on the way, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. That's incredible. That really is. It's a one of a kind story. Yeah, thank for sure. you. All right, you ready to get on this yes, now? Let's All right, do we're it. gonna do the black first. Wow. When you watched Tony Gwynn, did you ever think that you'd be in the Petco Park bullpen painting his face while you were a Padre? <sighs> I didn't think I'd be doing that. I just watched some, uh, just a lot hitting wise. And that was like, for me to understand hitting. So when I was a kid, I didn't watch him too much, but you know, going up through the, the systems and, and watching him hit the Tony Gwynn hole, it's amazing. I mean, this, guy, this guy's awesome. You know, it's cool walking in the hallway and you see his name all over the place. You see all the lineups and for, for years and years and years, his name is on the lineup. It's like Tony Gwynn one, Tony Gwynn two. It's pretty cool to be a part of. That's, like I said, one of the, re the main reasons why I wanted to, to paint him is because you, know, you think of San Diego Padres and how can you not think of Tony Gwynn? Matt, I would shake your hand and tell you thank you, but I'm just gonna tell you thank you because I don't want to get spray painted everywhere. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. But um, seriously, we appreciate it, and I know everyone's really excited to have you on the team. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 